everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regents. We're doing this one question at a time. Here's part two with question 25. Triangle D prime A prime N prime is the image of triangle DAN after a translation. So remember a translation is when we move a shape like up a couple units and over to the right a couple units, something like that. Explain why triangle D prime A prime N prime must be congruent to triangle DAN. So when we're doing a translation, this is a type of transformation where all angles and sides are going to remain the same and retain rigid motion. So that's how we know they're going to be congruent. So we just need to write a little sentence about that. Yeah, so that's the kind of the keyword they're looking for. They love that word, that those keywords, rigid motion. And um, just a reminder of why they're congruent. So if we had triangle DAN, so this is our answer, but I'm just kind of going to draw out why this works. So we have DAN and then we translate it, uh, let's say to the right, like 10 units and then down three units. And we ended up uh, something like this, D prime, A prime, N prime, these these points are just moved over and down and that would mean all angles are congruent and all sides are congruent, meaning that the triangles are congruent to each other. So that's why this is our answer. Question 26. The table below lists five metals and their densities. So here we have metal, we have zinc, tin, iron, copper, and silver, and then we have these different densities. A solid metal cube has an edge length of 5 centimeters and a mass of 982.5 grams. Using the table above, determine and state the type of metal from which this cube is made. So if we have a cube, metal, solid metal cube, so a cube is going to be the same length on all sides. So we're saying that it's 5 centimeters on all sides and it has this mass of 982.5 grams. So it's saying what kind of metal could this be made from based on what the mass is. So well, the first thing we're going to want to do, find the volume of the shape. So the volume of a cube like this is we're just going to multiply 5 times 5 times 5, right? Length times width times height. And then in a cube, all these lengths are the same. So 5 times 5 times 5, we're going to get 125 centimeters cubed, right? Because this is in centimeters. So now what we're going to do, we're going to find the value of the density by knowing the value of the mass. So what I mean by that is we're going to have 125 centimeters cubed, and then we don't know what we're multiplying it by. It's going to be one of these. Multiply times x. This is grams per centimeters cubed, right? These That's what density is. So we're multiplying the volume times the density to get the mass. So this is really the formula we're using. So we usually just find the mass, but we're kind of working a little more backwards with this question where they give us the mass first and then we have to find the density. So we're going to set this equal to the mass based on our formula, 982.5 grams. And notice these are going to cancel out. So we're left with 125 X, which it represents grams equals 982.5 and then we're just going to divide to find x. So 982.5 divided by 125 and we get 7.86 grams per centimeters cubed. So if we look at our chart, what is 780.86 grams centimeters cubed? That would be iron. So the choice here is iron. The answer here is iron. So this, uh, this looks like it might be complicated, but really uh, it's just like those other questions where we're finding the mass, but instead of finding the mass, we're finding the density. So, and you could also guess and check and see which one works. You could have also done 125 and then multiplied times each of these to see what gives us 982. That's another way to go. You could guess and check. So there's multiple ways to come to this answer. Question 27, the endpoints of CAS are negative three, one and seven, six. Determine and state the coordinates of point A such that the ratio of CA to AS is 3 to 2. So here, 
these uh this is a nice easy question we're going to be using a formula here one to find the x coordinate and one to find the y coordinate and they're they're both very similar formulas we have x is equal to x1 plus a over a plus b times x2 minus x1 so if you're wondering how do we fill this formula in so what we're going to do is use all the information they gave us so this negative 3 1 is going to be our x1 y1 this 7 6 will be our x2 y2 and then the ratio they gave us 3 to 2 is going to be our a and b so our x1 is negative 3 plus a which is 3 over a plus b so it's 3 plus 2 times x2 7 minus x1 uh, which will give us plus 3 so you could plug this in or you could see this is going to be 30 over 5 which gives us 6 so we get negative 3 plus 6 which will give us 3 so we, we get x is equal to 3 so that's the first part of this question we're also going to find the y value to this so it's going to be a very similar formula but instead of x we're going to be doing y so we have y is equal to y1 plus a over a plus b times y2 minus y1 and we're going to do the same thing filling in the values that we filled out up top so y1 is 1 plus a 3 over a plus b 3 plus 2 times y2 which is 6 minus y1 which is 1. This will give us 15 divided by 5 which will give us 1 plus 3 so we'll get y is equal to 4. So now we just want to put this all together as a coordinate point right we found the x and the y so we know this as a coordinate point will be 3 comma 4 and that's our answer. Question 28. The ramp shown in the diagram below has an angle of elevation of 4.8 degrees. The ramp is built to a landing 0.6 meters above the ground. Determine and state the length of the ramp to the nearest tenth of a meter. So if you look at where the ramp is, that looks like that's going to be our hypotenuse, right? So let's, um, let's draw out this right triangle that we're looking at down here. So here we go. And they give us that this angle is 4.8 degrees. We know that this length here is 0.6 meters. And then they want us to find the length of the ramp right here, right? This is where the ramp is, which we know is the hypotenuse. And in relation to this angle, the other piece of information we have is the opposite. So in case you haven't guessed it yet, we're gonna be using Sokotoa here because this is a right triangle, which is why we, we mapped out the hypotenuse and the opposite value. So if you look for the hypotenuse and the opposite, you can see that we're gonna be using sine. So sine of our angle, 4.8 degrees, is equal to the opposite, 0.6, over the hypotenuse, x. And then we could just use some uh, algebra here. So we could cross multiply, we get sine of 4.8 degrees, times x is equal to 0.6, and then divide this on both sides. And we get seven, and then look back, we wanted this to the nearest tenth of a meter. So we're just gonna round up 7.17 will become 7.2 as the length, 7.2 meters. And that's our answer. Question 29. Angle KML is the vertex angle of isosceles triangle. Okay, so they're already giving us a clue here. Angle KML is the vertex angle. So that means like the top angle of an isosceles triangle below. So that means that this is the vertex and then that these sides are congruent to each other because this is an isosceles triangle. And that's also going to mean that this angle K will be congruent to this angle L. Uh, let's see what else they give us. Side LM over here is extended through vertex to point M. Okay, so we see that this is, this L goes all the way out 
extended to n. If angle K is 15 degrees, determinant state angle K M N. So if we know that this is 15 degrees, since this is an isosceles triangle, we know that this angle L is also going to be 15 degrees. And then from there, because this is a uh, triangle KML, we know that this is all going to add to 180. So we could find angle M. So in here, to get this, we're going to do 180 minus 15 plus 15 or minus 30, which will give us 150 degrees. So angle M right here is 150 degrees. Okay. And then because this is a straight line, they said that side LM is extended through vertex to point N. So we know that this whole thing also adds to 180. So to get this angle here, we're going to do 180 minus 150, which gives us 30. So we know that angle KMN is equal to 30 degrees. Question number 30. In the diagram below of circle L, the area of the shaded sector KLM is 7.5 pi. So, so they give us that this area here is 7.5 pi. And LK, the radius, is equal to 5. Determine and state the degree measure of angle KLM, the central angle of the shaded sector. So we're looking for the value right here. So this is another one of those kind of working backwards questions where they give us the area of the sector, but we're going to have to find the central angle. So, so what is the area of a circle? The area of a circle is pi r squared, but they don't give us the area of a circle. They give us the area of a sector. So the area of a sector is always the degree measure, which we don't know. So I'm going to call this x, x degrees over the whole um, degrees of a circle, which is 360 degrees. Can we fill this formula in? That's our question. So we know that the area of this sector is 7.5 pi, right? So we can put that here for area of the sector. And then here we just have pi. We know the radius is 5 squared, or 25, and then we're still left with this x over 360. So based on this formula here, we can find the value of x. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll divide out 25 pi on both sides. Let's see what we get. So we get 0.3 is equal to x over 360. And all we, all we need to do is cross multiply 360 times 0.3. So 0.3 times 360, and we get x is equal to 108. So you know x is equal to 108 degrees. And that's our answer. And if you're like, I feel a little unsure, if you did it the right way, you can always double check yourself too. So if we plugged in 108, so if we check this, and we wanted to find the area of the sector, we would do pi r squared times the x degrees over 360, right? So we just did pi times 5 squared. And then now we know the value of this x, 108 degrees over 360. And if you plug this all in, you're going to get 7.5. So if we do 5 squared, you'll get 7.5 pi. So we know our answer is correct. And that's it, that's all there is to it for this one. Question 31. Using a compass and straighted, construct the image of point A after a flexion over BC. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is open up my compass a little bit and make sure that if I bring my, the point to point A, that it, I can swing this compass and make an arc that would hit this line at two times. So this looks good. This looks like a good distance. So we're hitting this line BC two times. So we hit it once over here and once over here. Now we're going to take our point to the one of the intersections that we just made and draw an arc on the other side of this line. So we're gonna draw a arc over here and then we're gonna take the same point and bring it to the other point we made and draw another arc. And then now all we do is just mark our new point. I mean, we've just successfully 
reflected our point A over line BC. And that's our answer. Good luck on your test and happy calculating.